So I did a video recently of FidoS running on dual displays and also running from an NVMe drive and I thought this would be a good operating system to put inside the Raspad. Now it's definitely not as slim as an iPad but the upside is it does fit a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 but will it fit it with this NVMe adapter on it? So let's open it up and have a look and see if there is enough room for the extra thickness. Obviously it takes up to this thickness uh, for the USBs and the Ethernet, but we have added quite a bit there. Let's flip it over. I haven't had screws in here for ages. And let's have a look and see, well at the moment I've got feet on the bottom of here, but I could get rid of those. Although I've got a screw down into it. So SD card slot, USB-C, HDMI, better put this one in first. And then the longer one. So I'm actually not gonna secure it, I think. Ethernet and USB 3. To be fair, it'll probably hold it in place because the cables are all quite tight. So just for the purpose of testing really, um, I'm kind of thinking you're better off with an SD card just because it will use less battery power. And while we're talking about battery power, let's have a look at what it says. So lithium ion 18650, 11.1 volts, 3200 milliamps, 35.52 watt hours. Now obviously it's not going to put 11.1 .1 volts into the Pi 5, but that does probably mean that it gives it maybe uh, 5 volt at 3 amps or something like that, which is enough for a Pi 5, but does it need more for the NVMe? The standard adapter is 5 volt, 5 amp, that's recommended. Oh, something stopping it. Yeah, it's definitely needs to go needs to go back a bit more if i put it there that's this side what's going to touch nothing really there's not an awful lot in there there's these bits for a fan oh actually yeah they're going to touch probably yeah it doesn't go, <laughs> it doesn't anywhere near go down okay i actually wonder if this uh, which goes underneath the pie may end up being slimmer. I think I'm going to give that a try first of all. Okay, just take all of this off. Because it does create a bit of a gap. You can see these are slightly raised and that might help. I think the MVME is on the underside. It'll be that way around. Yeah, this could work. So let's attach this one. How have I lost that screw? Ah, there it is, it was stuck. There we go, and actually this will need to be connected first of all. And obviously I need the different ribbon cable, which is this little offset one. Okay, that one's in. And then this one will be this way around. Actually, I might test that before I uh, put it inside the case. Yeah, that's booted up fine. This one on the right hand side is the SD card version of the software I've installed. Okay, so the standard screws that come with the Geekworm X1002, uh, which I've got in a separate video, I actually tested three NVMe boards. Uh, so I'm hoping these will go all the way through and uh, secure it in place because you see the way it works. The Pi is secured against the NVMe drive. Uh, this pushes power up to the GPIO pin so it takes power from the Pi and the NVMe drive is underneath. But we've got plenty of space for this because these are raised. Uh, but I've seen that the SD card slot isn't going to fit because of the way this cable is. You can get an SD card in and out, um, but uh, it's, it's not gonna fit this adapter because it's a bit more chunky. And if I unplug this, just to show you that you would be able to get it in there. In fact, if I 
play around with it a little bit. Just move it to the side. Got to be careful with these little cables. Well, to be fair, that probably is all right, actually. Well, those that, oh, it's not moving, right, it's not moving sideways to, to marry this up to this hole because this is touching the ribbon cable. So I'm going to leave the SD card adapter out and then just use it from NVMe. Which, the only thing about this is, obviously if you're going to keep the same operating system on there all the time, that's great. It depends if we're, the good thing about if we had an SD card option would be that we would e easily be able to boot from SD and rewrite the operating system as opposed to having to take it apart. I might be able to boot from USB. Um, I'm not sure if that will work. I'll give it a try. Uh, so let's pop that in place. Just being really careful with that ribbon cable. Just get one of these screws to go all the way through. So into the board and then underneath so is that getting all the way through? Feels like it might, oh no, it's not there yet. So it's gone through the NVMe board. Just got to seat it. Yeah, that's, oh, that, that's definitely gone in place. Right, so let's put another one in on this side. And that feels like it's going to find its place. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just going to hold it in place. I can lift up the whole board with just two screws in place. Obviously, we've got the PWM fan. Nothing's affected by that. That's nice and clear. Uh, we've got USB 3, which will provide the USB sockets uh, and also the touch control. The really great thing about the Raspad is that uh, because it uses standard HDMI and USB, it just works with every operating system. So if an operating system supports touch, there is no configuration, there's no screen configuration, there's no touch configuration, it just is incredibly simple. And that's why I've been able to get so many different operating systems on the Pi 4 and the Pi 5 running. So that's power. So will the lid fit? So it's gonna be this way around, and I can see there might be a problem here because these plastic bits are for mounting a fan. Well, I don't use the Raspad fan, I use the heatsink and fan from a Raspberry Pi 5. This is the official one. Um, but also I've used on the Pi 4, I've used a heatsink and fan combination. But I think that's going to restrict it from, from going on top. Yeah, it definitely does. Normally it just sits straight down. But you can see here, there's just a couple of mil uh, where, I mean, it is probably only, oh no, it might, <laughs> to be fair, it might be going into the fan. That wouldn't be a good thing. So I'm going to cut these bits off. And I could use the Dremel, but it's pouring the rain outside. So I think I'm going to see if I can use a steak knife. That wasn't bad. These are a bit thicker, so these might take a bit longer. There you go. That all came off pretty nicely. Let's get rid of all that. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Is it going to fit? Oh yeah, definitely fits on absolutely fine. I'm sure there's plenty of room in there. So press and hold the power button. And the lights come on. It always says no cable. Or oh, it doesn't usually say no cable twice though. Oh, it's booting. So pop my password in. And we're up and running. Yes. Nice. So let's try Mars and see if that works. And you can see all the uh, control center bits here. And the fan's not on, so it doesn't think it's too hot at the moment. Obviously, over time, it probably will. Now, I think this probably would be quite a good touch game. Yeah. So I was playing this with a joypad in my earlier video. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine. Oh, yes. Oh, no. 
Oh, how did I manage that? This is just a short one. And a big one now. Yeah, that, that is working fine. So now the question is, will it boot from my USB reader with an SD card? So this would be the same as if I plugged in a USB stick. So let's plug that into one of the USB 3 sockets and power on. So will it pick the NVMe or the USB drive? Okay, FidoS, so it picks the NVMe as the boot drive. And because this is running FidoS, I can't change the config. So let's just shut this down. And I booted up Raspberry Pi OS because if I do Control Alt T and sudo raspi dash config, you get boot options, which I think is under advanced. Yeah, boot order. So you see, you could choose SD card boot or NVMe stroke U. Ah, no, so you can't. Ah, so I can't actually distinguish between USB or NVMe. I can just tell it to either boot from SD card or NVMe. So if I did have to change the operating system, I'd have to take the drive out and flash it. So it probably would be worth trying some different cable options to see if I can get the SD card reader working. Okay, so let's talk about battery life. Uh, so with the NVMe drive fitted, uh, I played this Mars game. You can see I'm on level 102, which does take a while to get there. Uh, I also did a load of web browsing and a bit of video watching for around about 50 minutes. And then I played a YouTube video until the power cut off. Uh, and so that happened at about one hour and 20, yeah, one hour and 22 minutes. So that together with the 50 minutes of gaming and web browser, I make that two hours and 12 minutes, which I thought was pretty good with sound on and also screen on full brightness. So much better than I expected. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.